Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen and I want to welcome you back to another edition of your Adrenal Fix. Today I want to talk to you about why adrenal saliva tests suck. I really think that they suck. Um, and the reason that is is because they are very incomplete. Now, don't get me wrong, up until uh, when the technology was, wasn't available for looking at your urinary metabolites, um, I was doing uh, adrenal saliva testing and the majority of you watching this video probably have had adrenal saliva tests done and have gotten good information from it. And it's certainly better than the cortisol reading that they do in the blood with one time in the morning. Um, but it's not as good as it could be. It's better than, it sh better than the typical way of measuring cortisol in the blood, but not as good as the urinary metabolites. And, and the more, let's just talk about the blood test. The blood tests, are, if, if we saliva tests suck, the blood tests are horrid. And the reason that is, is because they're very uh, insensitive. Meaning if you have an adrenal problem, but your cortisol levels have not been impacting beyond um, clinical ranges, then the doctor is going to do a blood test and say you're normal. Meanwhile, you, you're not normal. Or if your blood, you know, if your cortisol levels are good in the morning, but they just tank after, you know, 11 or 12 o'clock, then because uh, the blood test only measured it first thing in the morning, it's not taking into consideration the circadian rhythm that goes up and down during the, the course of the day. And, and, and that's what we really want to check in on. So first of all, any test that you do for a cortisol test should be done throughout the whole day. And that's why they call it a four-point adrenal saliva test or a four-point adrenal urinary test. So that's good because at least it measures how your circadian rhythm is fluctuating throughout the day. But one of the major things why an adrenal saliva test suck versus a urinary test is because it only measures your free cortisol. Free cortisol means it's not the part of the cortisol that's bound to a protein that we find in a blood. So this is in your, your extracellular spaces, and namely your saliva. And so you can extrapolate how much cortisol you have that's not bound to the blood that's in your, in your saliva. The only problem with that is it only represents 1% to 3% of your total cortisol that you use throughout the entire day. So how are we making conclusions based on 1% to 3% of the total amount that's used? And I've made a lot of mistakes in the past when I've told someone who has really, really high free cortisol, hey, your free cortisol is really high, you're in a, an acute stress response, we need to lower that, we need to find out what the causes are and address those, and that's good, but if, if you just only didn't address the cause and you just tried to go about it by going through supplementation, you would give them, say, phosphatidylserine or other nutrients that would be designed to help lower cortisol. However, if you were actually to measure the metabolized cortisol, you may see that the metabolized cortisol is actually, actually, actually low. And so how could that be? How could someone have high free cortisol but low metabolized cortisol? And the way I explain that is think about having um, a, a certain amount of budget for the day. If you have um, money in your wallet at any one time, that is your free cortisol. Um, but then if you have an accountant that followed you out through the entire day to find out how much you spent through the entire day, then that would be your metabolized cortisol. So you could have actually all the money in your wallet that you're spending throughout the entire day. And that means your metabolized cortisol is actually really low, even though your free cortisol, what you have available at any one time, is high. And if you went about trying to give a person some supplements to lower their cortisol when really they don't have very much cortisol to get them through the day, even though their free cortisol levels are high, you're going to do the wrong thing. And I'm sure a lot of you have felt that. And I've done that in the past. Certainly, it's good to address why are we having low cortisol? Like, do we have a viral infection? Do we have Lyme? Do we have Epstein-Barr? Do we have gut breakdown? Do we have food sensitivities? Do we have heavy metal toxicities? Those are really important to address at the end of the day. But, you know, as far as supplementation goes, you need to look at metabolized cortisol and get an idea on how much you're using throughout the entire day. Um, free cortisone versus free cortisol. Saliva tests do not show that. It just looks at free cortisol. Um, but we want to look at free cortisone. Cortisone is the inactive form. So if you have really high free cortisol 
and really high metabolized cortisol. We want to know, is your body trying to compensate by, you know, taking some of the cortisol that's active and make it inactive into cortisone? It's kind of like I make the example, if you have too many recruits in the army, is your body trying to take some of them out so that you don't have an overflow? Or if you have too many people in the in the in the penitentiary, is your body trying to take it out? Or if you have too little, is your body trying to re-enlist? And that's a good uh, test to to look at because you can actually do some nutrients to lower the free cortisol if a person's not sleeping, and and there's some really good nutrients that we suggest for that. And then lastly, it looks at your eight estrogen metabolites in terms of a urinary cortisol test. The, the, the saliva test does not look at that. So when we're looking at urinary cortisol tests, um, we're also looking at, looking at their metabolites, what's been broken down. And there's eight different estrogen metabolites, so we can get an idea as to how phase one and phase two liver detox is going. And then, of course, it looks at testosterone, DHEA, androstenedione. Um, so, so really, an, an adrenal saliva test is, is now kind of old technology. And um, the urinary test is new technology. So hopefully um, I helped you think a little bit about what you need to do to get a better assessment of your adrenal, um, cortisol, uh, stress mechanism. Um, I certainly do free 15-minute phone consults to discuss your particular case. And we also do uh, uh, testing for urinary cortisol, and we can do that across the country. Um, I've even shipped into Canada and into Europe. And so if you are looking to work with someone that is doing these types of tests, make sure that you uh, inbox me. Um, my email is info at bocahealthcarecenter.com. I will leave that in this link here, and we can talk about getting you um, finally feeling better, having more energy, not being so tired, um, not being so brain foggy, and of course being on the right supplements. Because if your metabolized cortisol is low and your free cortisol is high and you're taking something to lower your free cortisol, I see that every day, um, then you're doing the wrong thing. So you need the best test to know what you need to be doing. Once again, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja. I look forward to helping you in your recovery of your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Be sure to check me out on my Facebook page, Adrenal Fatigue Society, or check me out on my blog, AdrenalFatigueSociety.com, and make sure you give me a share, a like, a comment, a thumbs up, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.